Welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to Carleton and to the Faculty of Public Affairs, also known as FPA. I'm saying welcome even though we're doing this online. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Brenda O'Neill. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Public Affairs. Uh, and I'm going to just explain a little bit about what that means, because I know when I was an undergrad, I had no idea what the dean of a faculty actually meant. And so at the Faculty of Public Affairs has about a dozen units, some are schools, some are institutes, and some are departments. And in this particular case, I know the people that are joining us today are from uh, communications and journalism. So that's a school. So there's a dozen of them, and I sort of oversee those. So that's what a dean does. It oversees those units. Uh, my colleagues and I, everybody at FPA is thrilled that you're going to be joining us this year. Uh, before uh, we begin your uh, uh, session today, though, I think an important thing to do is acknowledge uh, where we are, where we're situated, Carleton. Uh, so I want to take a moment just to acknowledge that Carleton University is situated on the unceded uh, traditional territory of the Algonquin Nation. I think uh, some of you are coming or linking in from different places, but it's nevertheless important to acknowledge where Carleton is, its location, and that it's on traditional Indigenous lands. And I always say it's important to do that with intention, because I think if we do this too often, we sort of forget about it's important, right? It becomes kind of a ritual, and I don't want it to be that. I want it to be with intention. I think that's an important point. So you're gonna be absolutely crazy immersed in your programs over the next couple of years. You're gonna be busy and that's a, a good thing. But I also wanna, the point I wanna make is that I want you to know that you're also part of a bigger community, that there is a community here beyond your courses and your lectures. Uh, so one of the highlights I think of being a Carleton student is being part of that community and connecting to it. And I think our, our students or our staff, our students, our faculty, everybody has been working very hard, I think over the past summer to try and figure out how to keep that sense of community alive, if you will, even though we're sort of coming back to face to face, it's still a kind of a bridge, if you will, term. So we've been trying to figure out how to maintain that sense of community and ensure that it's alive and well. So there's a lot of things that happen in FPA, you have events, you have lectures, and so one of the things I want to do is encourage you to take part in those, to think about yourself as part of that community, and here's a lesson that I learned, and I think it's a good one to take with you. You're always going to be busy, so there's always time to take in that lecture or that thing that you think I'm too busy to do. Make time to do it. You will always get your work done. So there's also, I think, in FPA, a ton of opportunities to you to be involved firsthand. As you know, there are FPA ambassadors who are on the call today. That's something that you could do in the future. There's also uh, opportunities for research. There's CUROP, which is the Carleton University Research Opportunity Program, and it actually pays you to do research as a student and connect in with a faculty member. Great opportunities. Part of what you have to do as a student is kind of read the emails that come out to you so that you know what's happening, but also connect into the community and link yourself in because it is part, I think, of what makes for an undergraduate experience and what makes it excellent is that the also the other stuff that happens right outside of your courses. As you can tell, I'm super excited that you're going to be joining us. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that you knew how happy we are that you decided to come to Calgary and especially uh, to FPA. And what I'm going to do now is hand you over to Stephanie Bowes, the FPA's event and uh, ambassador assistant. So thanks very much, Stephanie. And I wish everybody a great year uh, and best of luck. Thank you, Dean O'Neill. So as mentioned, hi, I'm Stephanie. So I'm the events assistant for FPA. And I want to thank you all for coming today. I'm pretty excited about these welcome sessions and for everybody to start their new adventure here at Carleton. So today we do have three units with us today. So communications, uh, media production design and journalism. So we do have four ambassadors with us from each unit. So uh, we've got Emma, she's from journalism. We have Ben from media production design. And then we have Corey and Andrea from communications. So they're here today to talk about a few things that they learned, a few tips and tricks, uh, why they chose Carleton um, and a little bit about what they wish they knew going in and that would be in the same position you're in. So I hope you do learn a lot. Just to keep in, just to remind you, <laughs> this session is recorded. So if you do want to stay anonymous, just keep your videos off and microphones off. If not, feel free to turn your microphone on at the end for the question and answer. You could also use the chat function as well. 
for your questions. So I'm gonna let all the ambassadors speak and then we'll open the question and answer at the end. So I'm going to pass it off to Andrea. Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. Uh, my name is Andrea and I am in or going into my third year of communications and media studies. And also I'm doing a double major in psych, but that's not really a FPA kind of in, the, <laughs> in that realm there. So just to focus on our comms and media today. Um, so I would say one thing that I really love about the comms program is just how like community involved it is. I feel like there's a lot of classes that provide you with opportunities on how to be involved in the Carlton community, as well as ways that your professors can help you kind of have those opportunities, whether it be, let's say, helping out at our on-campus radio, which is something in the communications and media realm and a little bit of journalism as well, but helping in areas that could potentially lead to a future job opportunity, let's say, and anything of that sort. Um, at first, I actually entered Carleton as a political science major, um, but then blindly switched in at the end of my first semester and first year, I decided, okay, political science is not the right fit for me. So, and then without ever having taken a comms course in my entire life, just figured, okay, let's try communications because I love um, public outreach, talking to people, and then as well as the more like research and analytical aspect of like what really connects our society and our world. So I decided, okay, communications, let's just do it. And I showed up first day of winter semester in my first class and I absolutely loved it. And the reason for that being is there's so many ways that communication gets transformed into our everyday lives and vice versa, where it's like, if you go out and see something like let's say, see an advertisement or see a poster let's say you can look at it in a more analytical aspect of being like okay here's the um outreach like uh tools that they use to engage their their community and and so on and so forth a lot of more analytical aspect of things that we see in our everyday society it's like you know in math when your teacher would be like oh you're gonna need to learn how to calculate this angle in your everyday life not so much that more so we're losing you a bit you sounded like a robot <laughs> Can hear me but I'm on a boat right now so my heart's not best. Um, what Andrea just, just said is that she's on a boat and her internet connection is kind of rocky. <laughs> Excuse the pun. So just while Andrea gets better internet back as she's frozen and I don't know about you guys but I couldn't understand much. I'm going to pass it off to Corey um, until Andrea comes back. Awesome. So yeah, so I'm Corey. I'm also in the communication and media studies program and I'm also going into my third year. So I chose Carleton mostly because it was actually pretty close to where I'm from. And the communications program is kind of niche. It's not um, at too many other schools. So I just like the location and I really like the program. There's so much flexibility with it. You can pretty much do whatever you want with the communications degree. Like I have friends that want to go to law school. I have friends that want to be teachers. I have friends that want to do, you know, more of the marketing side, whereas I want to work in sports. So there's a lot that you can do with it. And I just really, really liked that. And kind of like Andrea, I fell in love with comms the second I walked into my first comms class. The professor for first year communications is amazing. And I can't wait to take more of his classes. So I just really love the program and how it's so relevant to society and how it's so relevant to our generation because I wouldn't want to be studying something that I'm not going to be able to use forever. So I really like that. And I think just one thing I would say going into first year, knowing is just really get involved. I am really involved on campus. I love doing things outside of the classroom. And I would say, if you have an interest, there's probably a club for it at Carleton. So just find it. And if there isn't a club for it, you could probably start it. So I would definitely recommend just trying to get involved in whatever you think you wanna do. I am 
the president of the Raven Sport Business Club because I want to work in sports. And that led to me getting a job doing the broadcast for the men's and women's basketball team at Carleton. So there's just a lot that you can do uh, on the Carleton campus that's really good outside of the classroom as well. So yeah, um, I'll pass it off to Ben. Thank you, Corey. Um, my name is Ben. I am in my going into my fourth year uh, in the media production and design program. Um, for why I chose, uh, I chose this program because looking at different universities in grade 12 back in high school, I, I knew I wanted to do something to do with film, journalism, writing, but I really couldn't decide. And um, at the university fair that they do in Toronto, I met the then head of my program um, who pitched me what the program was about. And immediately I knew it's what I wanted to do because it is such a broad, includes such a broad scope of topics in the media field. So when you start off in your first year, you're going to be taking courses in web design, programming, journalism, um, film production, graphic design, and some just gen general storytelling and writing courses. And it really gives you as much preparation as it can for any th problems you might face in um, work positions in the media field. And it um, also gives you a bunch of experience using different technologies, different programs that are either um, extremely precedented in the industry, such as Photoshop, Illustrator, um, Final Cut Pro, things like that. But you also learn about um, newer inventions and newer technologies like virtual reality and augmented reality technology. And yeah, just it gives, that's what stood out to me is the amount of different things that you're able to learn. And um, as Corey said, um, my recommendation for anyone in first year, things I wish I had known, is how many opportunities there are to get involved in things that you may not think you were able to get involved in. Um, for instance, I went into this program mainly knowing that this is what I wanted to focus on, but I have a an interest in criminology and psychology. So as a media student, I was able to become part of the um, Criminology Society at Carleton and become involved with that. And without having to enroll in other courses, able to learn about another topic that I enjoy. And yeah, that's the main thing that I wish I had known in first year because I got into that in my third. And it's something I wish I had been able to spend more years a part of. Um, I believe that's all I have to say. I'll pass it on to Emma. All right. Hi, guys. My name's Emma. I'm going into my third year of Carleton's journalism program. And uh, with the journalism program, it was something that I had wanted to attend since I was in grade nine. So I chose my program like really, really early, but it was something that I was always passionate about because I liked staying like on top of the news. I love to write. And I thought that the best way to combine that is to go into journalism. So that worked out pretty well. And I'm actually from Ottawa. So Carleton was probably the easiest option for me, but it also turned out to have the country's like top journalism program. So that was really convenient. And honestly, like after having gone through two years in this program, I can definitely say that that title is warranted. It is in a fantastic program. It's very hands-on, but not so much so that you're overwhelmed at first. So they really ease you into the industry because I don't know about you guys, but I didn't have a lot of experience with journalistic writing in high school. Like my school didn't have a newspaper. I didn't do yearbook. I was just kind of in the standard English classes. And so that transition really helped me feel like I wasn't the only one who hadn't practiced writing articles before. And so you kind of start off with a history of journalism. So you get to know where the industry started and then you get to kind of discuss and look at where the industry is going since the journalism industry is constantly changing and evolving. And like even today, like the stuff that I'm probably learning right now, like you like 
people will learn different stuff years later. So it's just like, it's a crazy time right now to be a journalist, but it's also the best time because there's just so much that's happening that it's just, you get to stay on top of it and everything. And in the program, the professors are fantastic. So most, if not all, I think the professors are have all worked as a journalist in uh, like during their lifetime. And so there's been some really great professors that I've had that have been able to share their experiences with us during like in class where they'll give us tips or they'll say like, oh, I was there during this and then this is what I did. And so we got to learn kind of like their life experiences and like hear from like a real journalist about like what it's like. And they're obviously on top of like where the industry is going. So they were kind of telling us about how it was and then how it's going to be. So it's like, it's a really, really cool thing. And um, like every, like, yeah, every class. So we learn a history, then you get to learn more hands-on. So like the form of writing. So with journalism, we kind of started the inverted pyramid technique was something I had never even heard of. And so we went over that a lot. And then in second year, you get into more of the writing stuff and all that. So it's, it's a very nice transition that doesn't stress you out like at all. So it's really, really nice to be able to kind of get that practice before you're kind of thrown into the industry and things like that. Um, for my first year, I had a lot of fun uh, being on campus and everything. So I'm super excited to return to campus for classes this year. Um, it was amazing making new friends. Um, I'm from Ottawa, so I had some friends that went to Carleton, but through Carleton, through my classes, through my extracurriculars, I was able to make like a ton of friends, which was really, really fun. And you get to meet people from all different places and you have, you get to meet people who have the same interests as you. So I did theater in high school. And so I joined the theater society at Carleton and I got to meet people through that, which was really fun. And um, yeah, definitely getting involved was probably the highlight of my first year because it helped me feel more comfortable on campus. And like, I got to know like some older students, so second year, third year students who were like giving me all these tips and tricks and like, okay, make sure you get, take this class. Like this professor's great. And so like getting to know like people like that was really helpful as well. Um, now for something that I would recommend uh, for first year that I wish I had known was talk to your professors and your TAs. I used to be so intimidated by my professors and my TAs because they'd be like, oh my gosh, they're going to think I'm silly for asking that question. Or I like, I don't think that's a good question, but like pretty much if you have a question, I guarantee you other people have the same question. So reach out to your professors, reach out to your TAs. They're there to help you. Oftentimes like TAs will go like above and beyond to help you. So I was having trouble with a paper once and a TA sat me down and like helped me like format my paper. It was really great because I was just, it was kind of like the first time writing a university paper. So I was nervous, but uh, they're there to help you, which is like the main thing. So that's definitely what I would stress uh, to you guys. And then looking up resources is really important. So there's a ton of resources on campus that can help you academically. And uh, I took an intro class uh, in my first year that I was struggling with. And I learned about these workshops that you can go to usually like once a month or so that uh, will help you with the class. You can take like a practice midterm, a practice final, and it helped me um, like get through the class which was amazing and so I'm really glad that I learned about that resource and things like that so yeah looking up what's there reaching out to your professors also don't buy your textbooks before the class starts that's another thing that I always say because I kind of went crazy and bought all my textbooks and then it turns out I didn't need them or like you gave us a link for it online or something so yeah wait to get your textbooks until you have the first class that would be my biggest thing and yeah, so campus is like super fun. The journalism program is amazing. Everybody there is so knowledgeable and the professors are just so fantastic. So if you're going into journalism, you'll really enjoy it. But yeah. Thank you. That was great. Thank you, everybody. Um, so I totally back everything everybody said. <laughs> and one of the main questions that we received from these sessions is, should I buy the textbook? <laughs> so definitely take what Emma said to heart. I remember my first semester, I bought them all brand new, spent thousands of dollars, no joke. And then it turns out the profs were like, here's a free PDF. Or like my friend from like a year before said, oh, I have the textbook, you can have it. And I was like, what? <laughs> so definitely wait and save some money in there. Definitely, uh, definitely a good thing. And it's a lot less stressful if you wait. I found that I was very stressed by trying to run around and buy textbooks. So that is definitely a plus. So I am going to be opening the Q&A now. So anybody who is in the session can feel free to unmute their mics and ask a question or type it in the chat. Just make sure that the chat is working. Yes, perfect. There we go. 
Okay, so I will start off while people are typing or thinking of questions. I will start off with our second most common question that is asked, and that is, how do I contact my professor, go to office hours, et cetera, in an online environment? Go ahead. Um, send them an email if you don't know what their times are. Professors, most professors I have, that's how they want um, their office hours dealt with. Um, but for the most part, all the classes I had in the span of the last year and a half had the office hour Zoom link posted in C-Learn, but I believe we're switching to Brightspace or something now. So whatever the page is that your professor runs the class, they'll most likely have their Zoom link um, on the page with um, the hours that they have available for you to join. And you're able to join and hopefully you get in before anybody else. That's the easiest way to do it. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> uh, so we do have a question in chat and I'll just read out the questions and then you guys can jump in and answer. Uh, so just a general question. I apologize for my pet bird. She's wanting to be in the call right now. <laughs> so the first question from Sean is, are you guys involved in the mentorship program first years? So by this, I think Sean means either the first and family program or the bounce back program, any of those that are in the student experience office. Um, I can go here because so I was a peer mentor last year for the first year connections program. So as FPA ambassadors, we're not directly associated with that it's a whole separate program but I will speak to the program and say that I totally recommend it I had a mentor in my first year and her and I are still friends and I still talk to her and she's really awesome and then being a mentor was one of the most rewarding experiences I ever had just I still talk to my mentee as well so and sometimes you have multiple and so it's a really great program and it was how I figured out how to declare my minors, how I found different clubs on campus, how I figured out different resources, because to be a peer mentor, you have to like go through a whole bunch of training and figure out, like learn about all the different resources on campus and who to contact and the best way to do it. So if you haven't signed up for the first year connections program, I totally recommend it. It's the best thing that I did in first year and it was a really fun thing to work at in my second year. Perfect, thank you. Um, uh, to add to that for, for MPAD, um, I don't know if our program and classes themselves have peer mentors for the program specifically in those um, organizations. I still recommend anyone in, in MPAD to use them for other reasons. But if you are looking for a type of, for a mentor to help with classes, the Media Production Design Society does run a mentorship program for just media production um, and I don't believe the heads of that have um, announced when it's beginning and people can put their names in but that should be soon. Oh that's awesome thank you Ben. All right so we do have another question in the chat from Audrey and I believe this is for Emma. <laughs> so what does Journalism Society primarily do and how are they involved with the campus? Yeah, so I was actually on uh, the Journalism Society. We call it JSOC, and um, I was on it for first year. So I was a first year representative, and then I was a second year representative. I haven't applied to be a third year representative yet, but I will. Um, but uh, yeah, the Carl, like the JSOC does uh, events for journalism students. So as a year rep, you're kind of given a budget and you get to kind of plan events for people in your, like in your year, basically. So um, like it was a little bit harder second year because we were all online, but we were able to do like an online movie night. We did a PowerPoint night, like we did an Among Us like game night. So they got to do like fun things like that that bring people out and everything. It's just kind of your main goal is to get people to interact with each other, um, kind of do fun things like that and everything. Uh, in first year, we were able to do like a J gala. So we had like a nice, like fancy, like little dinner event and everything that was really nice. Hopefully we'll be able to bring that back sooner rather than later, but uh, we'll have to see. 
But uh, yeah, it's a really great way to know, to learn uh, and like get to know people in your program, which is like always nice because then you have friends in your classes and you're kind of in it together. Uh, it's also a great way to meet uh, older people, uh, older students in your program as well. So you kind of get to know them and like get some tips from them and everything, which is really nice. And it's, um, it's a nice way to get involved because I was really involved in high school. And so I figured like that would kind of be a great thing for me to do as well. So if you like planning things, if you like interacting with your classmates, things like that, like definitely do JSOC. It's really, really fun. Everyone is super nice and uh, we get to plan some really fun stuff. So, yeah. Thank you, Emma. I actually still have a question for you from Sean. Uh, what JSOC events are happening this year? You might not know yet, but if you do know any, yeah, I haven't been given the inside scoop yet. Um, I don't know if we'll be doing any in-person ones quite yet. We might be waiting a bit. It just depends. Uh, they, they're very active on social media. So if you follow uh, JSOC on Instagram or Facebook or anything, they're always posting about stuff on there. They sell merch. So I don't know if you notice I'm wearing some journals and merch. Uh, you can get it from, from them as well. We design it ourselves and everything. So it's really, really great. So yeah, don't know about the events yet, but there should be some really cool stuff. We're, they're actually doing an initiative right now that's uh, they're doing like give it like uh, a giveaway thing for audio packages and TV packages for third year students like myself who have to buy equipment for this year and so they're doing like you can apply for to get like a free package of equipment which I think is really really great for uh, some students and everything so they do things like that but again yeah I don't know the specifics yet. And being a, an events assistant with the university I can let Sean know that um, online events are happening in the fall. You need absolute special permission for late fall in-person events. However, the winter is up in the air and it looks like we'll have some in-person events in the winter. So maybe if there's a winter gala, we can keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> um, so that's the inside scoop I know from the university. Um, so if there are JSOC events, I'm sure there'll be like another Among Us night. That would be so cool. <laughs> All right. So there are no questions in the chat, but if like I said, if anybody wants to jump in and put in the chat or unmute their mics, um, go for it. Um, I think Paul Wilson, he's our Associate Dean for Students and Enrollment. Um, I think he wants to say a few words. Oh, well, uh, thanks, Stephanie. You must have wondered what this uh, old gray-haired guy was doing, kind of lurking on the call here. Um, so I'm, I'm Paul Wilson. I'm an Associate Dean. So I work for uh, Dr. O'Neill. Um, somebody said it was kind of like being a vice principal. It's like, yeah, I guess that's true, um, whether that's good or not. Um, I've just been doing it for like a month. So I'm here kind of learning too about what all the different programs are. Um, and there's so many neat things happening at Carleton. So welcome. Um, it's great that you are going to be here. And like everyone, I just encourage you to take advantage of everything that's going on, um, uh, especially in the comms world and the journalism world, you're in the nation's capital. There's so much interesting communication stuff that you can get involved with in Ottawa. Um, uh, so, you know, you won't have any lack of, of that, even in a digital world. Um, but uh, time management is an important thing. Um, you know, you have to make time for other things, but you got to make time for your studies too. Sometimes that can be a um, a bit of a crunch and there are cycles throughout the semester. So I was just going to mention that there's something called the Center for Student Academic Support that Carleton runs. They've got workshops on time management. Uh, they've got workshops on academic discipline, you know, plagiarism. Those are things that end up on my desk. We won't talk about those, but um, uh, the bottom line is if you've got questions, as, as our students have said, um, ask your professors they're there, uh, you know, it's part of their job to help. And most of them uh, really like engaging with students. I mean, they're human beings. Occasionally you get some that, you know, maybe don't, but, uh, but most of them do. So, um, so take advantage of, 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 of your professors. Um, we talked about books and the course outline. Maybe people can comment on the importance of the course outline because uh, different maybe from high school, the course outline in university is supposed to be a contract. So, you know, you'll get it in your first class um, and really pay attention to that. It'll have all the information about contacting your professor about what's expected. So that's a really key document. Anyway, uh, welcome. Um, hope you have a great year. Thanks, Paul. So actually, yep, Paul brought up a great point. Um, the course uh, syllabus or outline 
is a very important contract that you'll receive um, usually like a day or a week before the first class for the most part. I'm gonna let our ambassadors talk a little bit about what it is, what it means, and what you can find in it. So if Emma wants to start. Yeah, so the syllabus is probably the most important document you'll get from your professor. Seriously, it's like, it outlines the entire class, like from start to finish. It'll have your office hours, contact information, your TAs, and generally it'll have all the due dates for all of the important assignments throughout the semester. And so that's kind of what I focus on when I look at my syllabus at first. And I usually like I have my trustee agenda here and I'll take all the dates and write them in just so I have them there. So that when I'm flipping through, I'll be like, oh, okay, so this is due in two weeks. I should probably start it this day. And so it's a great way, like you can use it to stay organized and stay on top of things. Cause I found in university, probably the toughest part of the transition from high school to university was kind of that you're on your own and that you need to like self be self-aware of when your deadlines are and when your things are due your professor's not going to be like okay this is due in one week this is due in three days this is due tomorrow like they're probably going to just be like okay it's due that day go and do it so you just kind of have to stay on track of things and uh, getting an agenda really helps with that. But yeah, your syllabus, definitely, I usually save mine on my computer. If I ever have any questions, there'll be a, a thing about like the grading process, usually um, plagiarism, like guidelines as well and rules and stuff. Um, other than that, yeah, if somebody else wants to jump in. I think uh, it's also a really helpful tool to look at when you have questions, because a lot of the time professors, it's usually in the syllabus. Like if you have a question, it's probably in the syllabus. So like look there first, because as much as like, I think the FPA professors are all really amazing people, but they're also really busy people and they don't get back to you very quickly sometimes. So when you have questions and stuff, probably 95% of the time it's already in the syllabus, unless it's like a specific question about an assignment or something. But if it's due dates or anything, grading processes, what the percentage of the assignment is, it's probably already, it's already in the syllabus. So just make sure you actually read it. And another thing that's really helpful is they usually put like what you're supposed to get out of the course in it. So what you're supposed to know by the end of it. And that's really helpful because if you go in knowing like, okay, I'm going to learn about this, 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 and this. And it's like, okay, so now I can be a little bit more prepared. You know, maybe I can read up on some of it before. I, I When I go into readings and classes, I actually am aware of what I'm going to learn. You're not just kind of flying blind and think that you're just going to learn about communications. Like it might be specifically on culture or it might be on public relations or other stuff. So it's really nice to know exactly what you're going to learn from the class. Both. Ben, did you have anything to add? I think I have anything to add. No. Yeah, they covered all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so we do have another question in the chat from Sean. Paul Is has Del something to add, I think. Oh, go ahead, Paul. Oh, I, I just, just, just one of my favorite stories uh, about what um, I think uh, was it Emma or, or Corey was just talking about was uh, a colleague of mine had a student come to him once who said, Oh, professor, um, your co in your course outline, you say X, Y, Z, but my friend says A, B, C, which is it? <laughs> it's like the answer, of course, is what the professor said in the course outline, um, but it's funny how people can convince themselves otherwise sometimes. So just an ad for the course outline. Yeah, always pay attention to the outline more than your friends. Uh, <laughs> so Sean has a question. He said, is self-advocacy important in these classes? So I think like, okay, so in terms of self-advocacy, like university is a lot different in, in terms of high school in the fact that you can, I'm not gonna lie, I've challenged some grades while I've been in university because sometimes you know what you're, entitled to and sometimes it's like well your course outline said this and I did that so why am I not getting the grade or like another thing along with course outlines is rubrics I don't think I ever looked at a rubric in high school because I was like I don't I just never did but I like study those in university because there's so many ways that you can get like the easiest grades like I'm in a stats class right now and you get a grade for changing the document title like there's so many easy things. So if there's little things that you're missing out on points for that you did do, it's really, your professors are really nice about being like, oh no, I'll look over that. I'll see, I'll 
and it's not just assignments like I've done it for exams. So yeah, self-advocacy is really important because you're in university, you're treated more like an adult. You're, I find I have an easier time, like not necessarily standing up for myself, but just knowing what I deserve in terms of like grades and stuff. Sometimes if I see that there's a discrepancy there, a lot of professors are really nice about helping you out and reading it over. And even it's sometimes I'm like, what did I do wrong here? Because I don't want to do it wrong again. And I don't mind missing out on the points as long as I know I'm not going to do it again. So yeah, self-advocacy is really important and professors are really approachable. And definitely if you're like, okay, there's clearly a discrepancy here, then say something. Professors want you to correct them. They want to do their best job at teaching you. So if there's things that aren't lining up, then going and talking to them is really, really helpful. I absolutely agree with that. You know, professors and TAs, they're they're people too. We all make mistakes sometimes and they're doing a lot. They're marking a lot. And I remember I went to a TA once and said, oh, like, I want to know what I did wrong here because I don't want to do it again. Like what Corey said. And they were like, oops, that's not wrong. <laughs> so if you ever have a question, it's completely normal. Definitely yeah. voice your questions. You will never, yeah. ever be, you know, ridiculed for asking a question. Yeah, like that kind of stuff happens a lot too, where you're like, oh, what did I do wrong? And they're like, actually, that was me. And because sometimes like TAs have like 75 papers to mark and they have two weeks to do them or 75 exams to mark. And and sometimes your TA doesn't mark your exam and stuff like that. So just asking and being transparent with them is really, really helpful. And yeah, I'm just going to jump in. I like, that's another thing why office hours are so important because when I was in first year, I wrote a paper and I just wanted to kind of talk about the grade and kind of understand like, like what I, like what I could improve on. And so I visited my prof during office hours and we had like an hour long chat about a paper and then we were just chatting by the end of it. And it was really nice. And it kind of like made me less intimidated about professors after that. So I was like, oh, they're just normal people. Like it's fine. So it's just like, it's a nice thing. Like, especially with self-advocacy, if you like really want to learn about like what you're doing or you want to stand up for your grade, profs are okay with that. You just kind of, you have to go for it. Yeah. Completely agree. Okay, so there are no more questions in the chat. I'll just wait a few seconds here in case anybody wants to put in a last question before we end the session. While that's happening, is there anything of closing remarks or any extra tips or tricks that any of our ambassadors would still suggest? Um, something, I don't know how many MPAD people are, are in this. Um, <laughs> Something I, I forgot to mention, sorry, I live on Bronson. There are constant <laughs> alarms going down the street. Um, but something I forgot to mention um, for something I wish I'd known going into first year is that with such a broad program, and I believe, I'm not sure about comms, but I, I feel like from what I've heard, you guys have a lot of different classes that you're learning, is spend more time on your weaknesses Going into first year, I did not have any background in programming. I did not have any background in graphic design. And I had a very, very difficult time getting through those courses. And um, what I, I wish I had done and what I do now, especially with the programming courses, I've become more adept with the graphic design aspect of what we do and the, and the Adobe stuff that we do. But with programming, as soon as I get um, a syllabus um, sent out by the professors for one of those courses, I immediately go to, there are many different programming sites you can use to teach yourself languages and same thing with any other topic you might have an issue with. I just go and try and get a base understanding of what I need to know for that topic um, so that I still have time to work on the stuff that I'm better at, but also put a little extra time into the things I have much more difficulty in because there are so many different things that we're learning. Yeah, that is I all. yeah, I definitely second that <laughs> because there's like, like comms is a pretty broad program too. So focusing on what you don't really know much about can also help you find something that you're super interested in too. Um, I will also say just kind of two things to know before you're going in or wish, I guess, 
what I wish I knew going in first year was meet people outside of your program too. I wasn't a resident student. So I, um, cause I was uh, almost 20 when I went in first year. So I didn't really want to do residence. So getting to know people outside of your program too is really fun. And it helps you gain a lot of connections because like you never know if that person you sat beside in first year psych is going to end up being someone that is going to help you get a job later in life. So just make connections everywhere that you can. It's super, super helpful. And it's also just fun to hear about what other people are doing in other programs and what they like to do and all that kind of stuff. And also, I don't know if anyone in this call is in the co-op program, but um, definitely apply to it if you're not. I didn't go into first year in the co-op program, but then I applied to it and I got into it and I'm on my first co-op placement right now. And I, I really want to work in sports after school. So I'm currently working at Carleton in the marketing department and the sports marketing department. So, and that came from a connection that I had through getting involved. So going after co-op jobs and getting that experience is super, super important too. So if you're not in the co-op program, I definitely recommend going into it. Or if you're in a program where it's like, you get practicum or something, make sure you go for the job that you want. Because I have friends that are in jobs that they aren't really into. And I've loved every second of my co-op term and I'm continuing to work for them during the school year. So co-op gives you a lot of really great opportunities and a lot of really great connections. I will jump in with the thing about journalism. So if you're like me and you haven't written any like journalistic style, like stories before that's uh, Carlton has the charlatan, which is the student run newspaper, which is fantastic. And so it's run by journalism students. The students are the editors. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you ever want to get practice, yeah, you can sign up and uh, get on their newsletter and they like they send out stories weekly and you can pick a story. They'll send you the sources. They'll send you kind of what they want and they'll be able to help you out as well if you need any extra guidance, uh, whether it's with Canadian press style writing uh, techniques and things like that that you maybe haven't learned yet. They'll be able to help you out. Like, and it's a great way to get some experience and uh, to get some bylines under your belt because I mean, like always going into the industry, you want to be able to kind of show what you've done and so I've gotten like I've written a couple stories for the charlatan that have been published and they publish online just now but uh yeah it's a really fantastic way to gain experience and kind of meet again meet people in the program and uh yeah get some experience thank you everybody those were great tips so Sean has mentioned in the chat as well uh how can I find out about this co-op so I can answer a little bit towards this as well and then I'll let Corey jump in too so in this case, uh, co-op programs are different based on what unit or program that you're in. So for example, um, communications co-op will be different than business co-op and so on. So something that is extremely important, if you were to remember anything from the session, it would be to talk to your academic advisors. So you should talk to your academic advisors. I did once every semester, but definitely once a year at the minimum. Um, they'll just keep you on track, make sure that you're getting um, all the requirements to graduate, which is the end goal. So you definitely want to make sure you're going to make it. Um, and then they'll also be able to help you with co-op as there are requirements getting in. You need a certain um, GPA, which is a uh, grade point average. So you need certain grades to get in and you need to meet certain requirements uh, for your standing and credits. Um, I'll let Corey go into the more fun aspects. <laughs> um, yeah, so after you talk to your academic advisor if you're like not already entered in the co-op program as you go in um you'll have to apply so you do that through the co-op office so that in person i think is located in the cttc um but i'm not 100 positive but it's really easy to just email them and reach out the application process is pretty easy too and as long as you like stephanie said as long as you have the right grades and you meet the like academic standing requirements, it's not very hard to get into because they want people to have that experiential learning. And I will say that the co-op job search isn't the most fun thing in the world because it's very lengthy and it's very kind of hard. Like it's hard sometimes. Like I went through like four or five interviews and I didn't get any of those jobs. I got my job because of a club that I was in and they offered me the job and they made it a co-op position. So I, will say that the co-op process is a hard process and trying to get a job isn't always the easiest thing. I know a lot of people in their first co-op term didn't even get a placement. So it is lucky sometimes, it is pretty lucky when you get a placement, 
but definitely it's so worth it when you do get the placement because you learn so much more and you apply things that you've learned inside the classroom to co-op. So definitely if you want to apply, it's talk to your academic advisor and then the co-op office is the way to go. Definitely, and you don't need perfect grades to get in, as Corey mentioned, they want people to get the experience. So don't feel intimidated, always apply. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So always apply, always go for that club, you know, always ask those questions. Uh, another thing about co-op, if you have experience with high school co-op versus university, is that 99% of the time, university co-op is paid. <laughs> so that's an extra plus, because <laughs> I know high school co-op is not. <laughs> um, so you'll get uh, a pay for that. So that's good. Ben, did you have something to add? Oh, no, I was just hitting the button. <laughs> My oh, bad. No worries, no worries at all. Okay. Can, can, can I ask if any of our ambassadors have experience with the federal government's FSWEP program? Because the co-op is a Carleton thing, uh, but the federal government also has a program for student experience, which you, know, you might consider a co-op that has co-op-y kind of um, qualities sometimes. Um, and since you're in Ottawa, uh, that's, a, that's something you could consider applying for, uh, especially if you speak French, that's a that's a major bonus. Anyway, just that's another option. Don't know if anybody's had experience with that. I was like, I but I didn't get in yet. Ah! <laughs> I haven't gotten chosen yet, but uh, yeah. maybe someday. It's a really good program though. I've had friends that work uh, through FSWAP and it's like a, you put your resume in and it's like computer generated. It chooses your resume based on keywords. So it is a tough one to get into, but it's definitely worth it for the work experience for sure. Yeah. I've known people, actually, my husband was in it and it was the most rewarding experience and a couple of our other ambassadors are in it so my fingers are crossed for you emma <laughs> good luck <laughs> um are there any more questions moving forward speak now or forever hold your peace <laughs> um i am going to put my email in the chat for anybody who has extra questions i can either answer them or connect you to an ambassador that can answer them so i'll put my email in the chat now if you don't catch my email today in the chat the person that sent you the Zoom invite is me. So you can just reply to that email that you got uh, last night from me and I'd be happy to answer any questions. So if that is all, uh, we are coming up on the time for the end as well. So my closing remarks are just thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining Carleton. It's a really exciting experience. I was a student at Carleton, now I work for Carleton. Uh, Carlton's definitely in my heart and so I'm really happy that you're here and I know you're gonna absolutely absolutely love this new adventure that you're about to embark on. Does anybody else have some final words? I, 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 I can just sorry I just want to say you guys I went to a different university first and dropped out and I came to Carlton and I love it so definitely made the right choice definitely fpa is the best so good choice everyone <laughs> <laughs> um pardon me if i'm pronouncing this wrong but ola says thank you guys so much i hope you all have a great day <laughs> so thank you all for joining us thank you to my ambassadors i really appreciate you taking the time this morning and i hope you all have a lovely lunch <laughs>